Hi everyone, today I'm going to be discussing various celebrity and historical figure typings with Peter, also known as Expat, who is a very experienced, distinguished oceanist and has been one of the founding members of my diagnostic team. Um, so Peter, did you have any any idea of who you'd like to discuss tonight? Uh, no, you can make, uh, uh, no I don't actually, I was thought mm. Of more, I when I first mentioned this subject, I was more thinking in, in a, as a general, as a general subject, how to approach. Oh, I think was uh, I think some people, uh, uh, on occasion, I hear people being skeptical mm. of uh, the of the usefulness mm. or the possibility of typing uh, celebrities or historical uh, people, uh, mm. but. Uh, well, I wasn't think of anybody else in particular, but we can talk about. Uh, and if anybody wants to discuss any any anyone in particular, we can we can we can try. Mm. Not a problem. Okay, that sounds good. It's also a subject which I'm going to be talking on in April at the British Association for Psychological Type. Going to be okay. doing how to type famous people. Right. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that's a good good start. Yeah, and in general, I think that, well, it'd be good for you to give your thoughts as well on it. I know in the past we've encountered people at certain meetups who have been skeptical of the idea of typing uh, a celebrity, often because you don't know them personally. Yeah. Okay, sure. do you want me to yeah. start on that? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Well, look, I mean, um, okay. What I would say is that uh, first, there are no to, I mean, to, to, to type somebody. You have to have uh, obviously, you have to have as you have to have as much information as possible and try to mm. distill that information and have to select a bit of the information that mm. applies to any any individual, whether you know somebody personally or whether it's a famous person you see as well a celebrity or, in a, or whether it is a celebrity because of a because it's an actor or, or whoever, or if it is a politician or whatever, and also whether it is a, a historical figure, right? Uh, or whether it's somebody who lives, uh, who died 20 years ago, which means there is still mm -hmm. enough of a video material of films, or whether it's somebody who lived 200 years ago, where, of course, mm -hmm. you have to rely on, on, on whatever you know about, about their lives. Um, I don't, I think that no matter how much, info, uh, I think in all these cases, to, I mean, to, to get it out of the, the way, you can always get it wrong, right? A typing. I mean, any typing mm. is a proposal, a suggestion, and a starting point for discussion, I think, right? Mm. I mean, when we tried to benchmark uh, people for types, we are just, at the end of the day, we are just trying to do our best uh, uh, and be as careful as we can in reaching what we think is uh, the more likely mm. uh, typing. Uh, for the for the person, uh, but at the end of the day, you can always be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And that applies also to whom you know personally, right? And I, I, I actually would say that I have known, and, and I mean, knowing somebody personally can be misleading, right? Because uh, I have known people very well, right? Uh, and I have mistyped them, right? Um, and that not only myself, I know other people, experienced people in socialists who have as well, and I, I suspect so have you. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, I have to say, when experienced people mistype somebody they, they know closely, usually they don't get it too wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Usually they, they mistype them for a type which is uh, similar. Yes. Uh, I haven't yet seen somebody uh, mistype somebody they know closely for for their conflictor for instance or something mm. like that right yeah. usually usually uh, and the mistyping is a uh, usually it's for their uh, look-alike type mm. or for uh, uh, some other type which is not so different so no different uh so uh, i saying that okay so and also depends on how you know the person right i mean for instance if you know somebody at work uh, you you may know this person, but you are you are still so, uh, only seeing one side of this person, right? Yeah. Uh, I I would say that probably 
um, people who are good in socionics mm. should be able to type accurately without mm. too much difficulty uh, the close family if they really grew up mm. uh, in close contact and daily contact with a close family right but uh, apart from that it's difficult uh, so I, I i i think that just because you i, I but my point i'm making is that uh, let's say that you meet somebody socially on occasion uh I, I, or uh, even if you or even a friend have, at who, whom have you known for over a, a few months mm. i would not say necessarily that you are better positioned to type this person than you are to type a, a, a historical person uh about whom there are a, a huge amount of information about their lives and and and, and biographies and uh mm. and etc uh, etc et right where you can i mean Yes, uh, 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 I think it's probably easier uh, to know uh, to know somebody. Uh, if, for instance, if you get one of those five hundred or even more pages of a biography of a, of a biography mm-hmm. about a historical person, uh, which uh, you, and if you really read it, right, uh, then I suspect, and you know, this pres- what this person did and the choices it made uh, all their lives. Um, I think you probably are a better position to type this person than somebody whom you've, whom you've known over a period of a few months uh, mm-hmm. just because you happen to meet them uh, alive, right? I, th- uh, I, I, that's the, I just want to, to put this, this, I just want to throw this, throw this out there. I think that's quite right. I think that at the end of the day, you're taking a single account of first-hand information. Yeah. And you know that that's fine that's authentic it's real it's direct it's unlikely to be false but mm-hmm. it's only of one aspect of someone's life when you get to know someone personally you see them in a particular context and it's often rare that you'll see them across a, a various number of different contexts where yeah. yeah yeah and actually right and let me if uh, uh let me then uh and but of course this this also is a problem in typing uh, uh, alive celebrities, right? Uh, mm. For instance, people that you are still alive and who are on TV, for instance, etc. Uh, um, depending on, on who we're talking about, um, uh, you may only be singing one side of this person, the side that they want to project, right? Especially if you're talking about politicians and and uh artists actors who of course they make a point of of just having this particular uh this particular they, they make a point of projecting a, a, a sort of image when they when they when they are uh, having a public uh, a public conversation an interview or, or something right which is why i mean if i want to for instance give uh, an example when i wrote uh, uh uh, when I typed uh, Barack Obama, mm. of, co- of course, I mean the the um, uh, the amount of information on Obama, whether it are whether it is written interviews or speeches or whatever, is essentially unlimited, right? I think yeah. these days, of course, you can uh, find pretty much almost uh, everything about. Uh, about uh, uh, every, every every speech, every interview, etc., you can see. Uh, but of course, we are talking about a, a very skilled, successful, professional politician, right? Who we have to assume most of the time he's very careful about what he's singing and what he, of, of the impression he wants to project, which of course is, is in itself already uh, an indication towards <clears throat> type because yeah. some types are more inclined to be good into 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 this than others right as of course is already is already a case mm. already already uh, true and it's which is true. why sorry go on. it's also why certain types of politicians when they do enter into into politics they stand out and become so unusual we could talk yes. about certain buffoon types yes yes no no uh, well uh, uh, yes uh, I want to go back to that, but let me mm. just finish the Obama example. Then mm. I have another example on that. Um, so that is why when I 
decided to analyze Obama, I made a point of, okay, uh, I will not pay much attention about what he has been doing and even uh, uh, written after he became a politician, a successful fresh politician. I look back at what he said and did into his early career. So, for instance, so I've read his his book, which he wrote, uh, his book, which was uh, the dreams dreams from my father, mm. uh, and uh, also the uh, interviews, etc., that he gave at the, at the earlier time when he was uh, promoting that book, uh, because that is more, and of course about uh, his own and of course about his own life and also about what people who knew him when he was uh, not a non-politician when he was still uh, 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 a student or whatever uh, what they told about him mm. right and that and of uh, and i thought that gives me a a a, a roller uh, uh, insight into into how his uh, Element how in, in about his uh, socioeconomic preferences do. Yeah. Then when he is there now, I mean, of course, I mean, since now, since I have concluded his type, right, which is is AI, mm -hmm. although it is if it, if it's not AI, I think it the it, is it will be a EAE, but I think AI is is what the evidence points to. Obviously, uh, even when he is being a politician. His type is still there, right? It's not as if, uh, uh, but he's still uh, he's still aiming at being something more calculated, uh, which I think is more visible if you look at his early thing. And I think that applies to uh, actually. Uh, we talked about the other day to start discussing about Elon Musk. Mm. Uh, I don't know that much about him, but I actually, it's a conclusion, right? Rather than look into what he's saying and doing about now or about people who have been writing about him now that he is a, a, a extremely rich and almost a, a mystical figure in a, in a way i started <laughs> looking at interviews and what people said about him or what he said about himself when he was at the start of his of his mm. be beginning to be famous right and then you see i think a more uh a, a more uh, i think what you see then is more of um, probably more more authentic of gives a, a, a closer indication to to his type um and to another example actually because you're talking about since you're not talking about actors as well mm -hmm. because a lot of celebrities people care about are actors of course um i mean in typing of course you have to be i mean it's, it's okay it's in, in, in on the one hand uh, if you go for what i call minimalist typing you, yes, you can propose a type based on um, very, 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 very little information about the person. However, that doesn't mean it's right. Uh, in the case of actors, right? I mean, you know that the typical type for actors is EIE. Yeah. And probably, if it is possible to do a, a, a quantitative analysis, probably that EIE would be, I reckon, the most common type among actors. Yeah. Right, I mean, I think that's uh, that that's that's, that's very very, very uh, highly likely. However, yeah. right, the conflictor type of EIE, the op the completely opposite type of EIE, uh, is SLI. Mm. And does that mean that there are no SLI actors? Well, yeah. there is one actor which we have, which the evidence indicates, is a uh, SLI, which is Harrison Ford. More than that. Oh, sorry? I think we've got more than that. Say again? I think we've got more than just Harrison Ford. Got, uh, no, no, but I, 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 I didn't say he was the only one. No, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, he, yes. He's the most obvious example, I think. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the one that occurs to me. Yeah. And, and for instance, but how do we see that he is, uh, uh, Harrison Ford is, an, is, an, is, an, is, not, is an SLI? Well, that's more difficult because then you have to try to spend or even waste some time looking into what he is, he is as an individual, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, things like he obviously prefers to spend most of his time in, uh, uh, in solitude. You know that he started his career before he went as an actor. He was a professional carpenter mm -hmm. and... Uh, 
he's actually uh, he by, by his own accounts he really dislikes uh, the typical sort of uh, uh, he he doesn't really like uh, uh, being in uh, the center of attention in sort of uh, talk shows etc. When he does go into this kind, of, he hates promoting his movies. Yeah. Uh, but he, however, he does enjoy when there is something original and more unique about the the such uh, the interview when there is in the, when he can have some more fun or be attracted by some, some sort of sense of absurdity or something. Mm. So all of that, uh, uh, so it is, if you can find the SLI uh, uh, there in him, but you have to look a bit deeper, right? Uh, while uh, uh, in some actors, uh, okay, you, they seem EAE, and if you just look a bit deeper, okay, what you see is EAE, right? Mm. Um, so, that's, so, so that's what I'm saying, but of course you have to, to you have to, to dig in and look and look into into the uh, in the, each individual uh, as much as close as you can. Now, of course, in some in some cases, um, in some cases, you it's not easy. Some some of these uh, some celebrities they're more guarded about what they do privately, yeah. and then it's very difficult to to dig uh, beneath the surface, right? Um, now I remember. But now going back to somebody which you don't seem to be able not to talk about, not to be able, whom you don't seem to be able not to talk about these days, which is Donald Trump. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but I, I remember that some time ago I, I met somebody who basically came. Okay, how do you know Donald Trump's type? You don't really know him. You only know what his his uh, public image. Well, I mean that I think in this case you have to use common sense, right? Obviously, um, I don't know Donald Trump personally, nor do I wish to. Um, particularly, however, right, we know that he has been essentially the same since he's seen the eighties, and pretty much everybody who does know him uh, and talks about him uh, says that he is he's the same person. Uh, he's, there are not there are not two Donald Trumps. The person that you talk to in a private situation. Is essentially the one that that you see. So at some point you have to use common sense and say, look, I mean, uh, we can reach a we can we we think we have a, a good idea of the guy really is. We don't have to to be always concerned. Oh, maybe when he's alone, uh, he's actually a, a a very different kind of guy uh, than he's uh, uh, than he's than the guy we see. Yeah. Right. At the end of the day, you have to you have to make a decision and 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 go for. Your common sense or, or your guts, if you will. Yeah, I I just like to add, uh, Peter, when you're talking about Elon Musk, that is actually a yes. type which there has been some disagreement on. And for people who are watching, I thought I should say there's going to be a a three way, well, three by three uh, debates, really a six way debate on the type of Elon Musk, whether ILE or LIE, between myself. Um, Peter here and Rita, as well as Damon, who's a member of my team and also very well known um, outside of my team in his own true generations. Um, also, Peter Robbie, who is a regular attendant of my London Socionics meetup, and Trey, who is a close friend of Damon. So those people are going to be, including us, going to be debating that type in a weekend coming soon. We're just going to decide on the date, one that works for everyone. Uh, sounds good. Yeah, I think that should be interesting as well because I think that is certainly for the mass is one typing which has generated some controversy even among people who are into socionics. It's certainly one of the more difficult typings we've had. Um, has anybody suggested uh, any other type between these two? Or beyond these two? I've seen someone suggest SLE, but no, no, no um, experienced socionists have I seen suggest anything other than. LIE or for us, ILE? No, look, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, which is interesting. Okay, mm. let me, uh, I want to point out, okay, let me use Elon, Elon Musk as an example, mm. right? Um, this is something people have to be in the typing to be aware of. Mm. Uh, uh, that's uh, because, okay, somebody, some say, say he's LIE and others say he's ILE. Mm. Well, these are these two types are quasi identicals, right? Mm -hmm. And they are quasi identicals 
for good reason, because superficially, uh, uh, these two types are very similar. Now, what uh, and similar in each way is where one way, one way is that their strongest functions, the two strongest functions of these types, um, use the same two elements, right? Which is uh, extroverted thinking or business logic, P, mm. a, and extroverted intuition or or just plain uh, uh, intuition, uh, 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 intuition of ideas, mm. right? So only, only uh, so these are the two strongest functions for both, for the two strongest elements for both ILE and NLIE, only mm. for, only they are reverted as functions one or eight. Um, so what I suggest, uh, what you have to be aware of is simply because if you look at somebody like Musk and say, ah, obviously, he is, he, what he uses all the time is extroverted intuition and the thinking, mm. uh, or, or, or somebody sees obviously the extroverted thinking or very obviously the intuition and immediately goes, oh, he's ILE, oh, he's LIE. Well, that's precise, that's what I say. I mean, you have to uh, uh, to dig a little bit, a little deeper to find out uh, uh, precisely which one of these two types is more likely to be. Mm. No, indeed. Um, and I think for us, at least, it was exploring, well, did, which suggestive function made more sense that way. Um, okay, no. let, uh, so, but let's not talk about, uh, uh, yeah, okay. about Elon Musk, yeah, right. because that's for the, uh, specifically, you can not talk about right. it generally, right? No, I, I think I think you're, you're quite right that um, we shouldn't get too caught up in the actual typing yet. No, no, but, but, uh, but for instance, let's skip it as a sort of, gen yeah, but as I say, uh, what basically, right, if you are trying to decide between two very similar types mm. and types who have strong functions, if you can only see the, and all that's obvious, it is, mm. uh, or what is most obvious, it is stronger functions, um, then the one way to do it is really to look into, to try to find out uh, what are the weaker functions. Now, of course, it's, uh, well, weaker, but of course, it's weaker is tricky because for mm -hmm. quasi-identicals, the same mm -hmm. functions are also uh, uh, weaker. Uh, you have to try to make a distinction between what are the suggestion function and what are the mobilizing functions and what are the... Vulnerable. Uh, the, uh, the vulnerable function. Mm -hmm. and try, uh, but of course, that's, that's from a public figure, that can be tricky because they are not always so visible, right? What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's a question of doing homework. If you see, a, a, if all you can see is the most obvious elements. And if you immediately assume, oh, I, I, the type is this because it's using those elements, well, but you, you, uh, I suggest there's a problem. You have to look a little, a little deeper. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're always going to type uh, uh, the most, uh, and actually in many cases, the most obvious typing is, is, is correct, right? Mm. But I suggest it's always good to second guess yourself and make sure that you are looking at all possibilities hmm. or, or at all reasonable possibilities yes it's got to be open you've got to try and find those sort of well i think are sort of like the push pull points the parts which actually get tend to be caught up on as opposed to the parts which just happen to just not do very much um yeah okay look um since not talking about Elon Musk now, but let me yeah. talk about again Donald Trump, right? Yeah. I remember that, uh, and I don't know if people still talk about it, but uh, when we first discussed Donald Trump mm. and we agreed that he was he, uh, on SLE for his type, I remember that there were some people also, I think, I don't remember the names, but I think in Russia, where uh, uh, certainly some people in Russian socionics, they, as they said, Oh, he's actually SCE, mm. right? Um, okay, I don't want to, I don't remember, and I don't want to uh, to put words in their mouths because I don't remember which arguments they used yeah. for SCE. 
but I would think that they were based on first maybe what they thought was a general gamma impression that Trump was mm. had been always very involved in in business, yes. etc. And uh, and very concerned about that. So that's a typical SE, uh, a typical gamma uh, uh, thing. And also that he seemed to be a master in uh, in public uh, relations and building up his image, etc which seem to suggest strong ethics, uh, ethics in the Sasonic sense. Uh, so, oh, uh, is that he right? Yes. Uh, but that is, what, uh, okay, and what I would say to this is that, again, if you look a bit uh, closer to it, is that, if you look at him closer, first, if you look at Donald Trump from his early days in the early 80s, before he became famous, because actually Trump started to become a new celebrity yeah. around uh, in the mid 80s, 86, 86 is when he published his book, uh, The Art of the Deal. Uh, that is when he really took off as uh, the beginning of the Donald Trump we know today. Yeah. And you can see today uh, his early interviews when he was just be beginning to become famous as a sort of uh, as a real estate guy in New York City. And the, the early Donald Trump, he was a different figure from what he is today. I mean, he was actually much less flamboyant than he is today. Uh, I mean, and even as, since as he has been in the last uh, 20 years, I would say. And much more, uh, and, and much more uh, contained and, and, and much more quietly talking about his, uh, uh, the, the, yeah, his business, which was real estate, mm -hmm. and what was in with his buildings, and what was he, what, why it was a good idea to do this investment, not an investment, and so he, he used much more extroverted thinking, uh, the business logic, than extroverted feeling. Now, as he, it was later when, uh, but he always used uh, extroverted feeling as a sort of instrument which is the typical self self organizing or the idea every publicity is that every every uh, every publicity is good even it's bad publicity he actually says that in his book and he has become much more focused into into uh, extroverted feeling lately because that's his mobilizing function but what is interesting yeah. is that obviously as you know um he he's very divisive because at least as many people who are who like his style of being uh, of using his little feeling there are at least as many who are completely repelled by it mm. right uh, which so it's not something that works in an universal way so to me it still shows that is a sort of and a sort of it uh, clumsier use of uh, of uh, extroverted feeling then rather than of a strong function right mm. uh, so that's just a uh, uh, away but of, again yeah. you uh, you have to look a little you have to look deeper and you have to look into all the information available of of how he has how he has de uh, developed or, or, or if you can say this word in the in the in mm. few decades and what his priorities are etc mm. no i agree and as we see the extroverted logic is something which he even now takes for granted in the debate, he didn't necessarily bother to prepare all the facts. It was just went in very confidently. No, yeah, no, but yeah. I think, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't think you don't talk about Trump. Uh, mm. What I think is obvious about him, right, obvious, is really the use of extroverted sensing. Yes. Of course, right? Yeah, and that. his approach to everything, uh, uh, yeah. his approach to, to, uh, 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 to, his political opponents, whoever it is, mm. is essentially to uh, destroy them uh, <laughs> by, especially yeah. by ridicule, right? Without mm. any any scruple. Uh, so and and it has no and that's pretty much it, right? Mm. It's, it's essentially uh, F is there to uh, <laughs> to win and basically to, to prop himself up by putting others down, right? Mm. This is all very brutal uses of of F, really. Mm. Um, sure. Speaking of uh, another SLE, people are wondering about the type of Marlon Brando. Right, okay. Really? Okay, what's the context of that? So, let's see what people say. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so 
Winston's mum wants to know um, if you could type Marlon Brando. And then we, and then someone else said that, oh, we'd already typed the Messer Lee. And Winston wonders uh, that he sees Brando's perhaps more NFJ-ish. He's what, sorry? NFJ, more of an MBTI intuitive effort, intuitive oh, feeling. Okay, look, I mean, I, I, yeah. I can't, okay, look, I cannot talk about uh, 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 MBTI, right? Mm. Uh, I mean, I can, but of course, I don't think it's useful for this purpose, right? Mm. Uh, I would also want to also, I, I would like to know exactly what you mean by that. I mean, we, we, I mean, what we, in, it, we, in, the, in what sense? I mean, I think I, can, I think I have an idea, but I'd like to know exactly what, in what sense. Well, actually, um, I'll leave that to Winston's mum to reply to, but one thing I noticed when going into celebrity types, it's, it is Myers-Briggs, but we were talking before about how we do tend to see um, things to be similarly similar enough that we don't type people as their conflict is across the board. But I think yes. an exception could be made for, um, for Marlon Brando. And I've seen Marlon Brando provided as an example of an INFP in the Myers-Briggs uh, by a uh, No, look, but, okay, but uh, again, I mean, uh, okay, look, if you want to talk about Myers-Briggs, we can, if you know that I don't think it's very useful, but for instance, yeah. obviously, uh, not obviously, I would imagine that he was used, uh, that the, uh, the people who typed him as I and I NFP, mm. uh, or, the, or the rationale for typing Marlon Brando as INFP, would be, for instance, in the case of introvert, in the case that he was, uh, the case of being a, a, a social, a social uh, mm. introvert, because uh, he tended to be, uh, he, did, he, he tended to be, uh, uh, he, he, he became a bit of a recluse, certainly mm. in, in, in his last years, especially when he bought uh, that, uh, I forgot the name, he bought that, not an island, it's more like an atoll, just off Tahiti, mm. and he spent a lot of time there, and so he obviously liked a lot of isolation. Um, I, but of course, uh, that is not, but first of all, I mean, that is not really all of it. He always remained uh, a, a sociable guy, mm. only, I mean, and I've read, I mean, I, I mean I've, I've read his autobiography, which is called uh, Songs My, My Mother Told Me, Mm. And well, it's not they're not really autobiography. It's a memoirs, right? Because yeah. memoirs is a different autobiography. And of course, what the other people and uh, said about, about him and what he uh, what he did. And of course, uh, even when he was uh, in uh, uh, there in Tahiti, he became at the time uh, he was a keen radio amateur. If you know what that is, um, a, a keen radio amateur. Yeah, you know what, you know what it means, radio amateur. No, no I don't know. Um, okay, look, um, it is it is still a thing, right? But especially before the internet, um, it it is uh, it, it was more uh, more popular for people to do the hobby, mm. in that uh, you would actually talk to other people in in the world, or at least within a certain range by radio, mm. actual radio, right? Mm. Right, and then yeah. you'd have a, yes. a, you have an identity, you have a, a code name, etc. Mm. And you just uh, uh, you just be and you talk to wherever he was or whoever it was within the range of the radio, right? Mm. And you just say, "Oh, my, uh, people like Marlon Brando would not say, oh, my name is Marlon Brando.' They would say, well, here is, uh, here is, uh, I don't know, some whatever code you would have, and talk yeah. about things. And uh, before the internet, such people were very useful because they would sometimes often help, help." Uh, uh, things like uh, police or fires etc because they mm. just convey information uh, uh, transfer, tr transmit information very quickly mm. now now uh, this aspect i think has become sort of obsolete but uh i think it's still a thing but when he was as i said uh when he was living in in that he's a tall in tahiti he liked to to be uh, uh, uh to to talk to people anonymously mm. right so what happened was um, he really disliked, and, and everybody who, who met him uh, also professionally really disliked uh, uh, this idea that people would learn to talk to him and be his friend because, uh, just because he was the, the public version of Marlon Brando, <laughs> right? He disliked uh, uh, 
people who he felt were attracted just by his fame. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, but uh, so that doesn't make him uh, uh, that doesn't make him uh, a low a low. Uh, that's the, the, I don't know. That the, the certainly doesn't make him an AI in the mm. in the uh, socionic term. If some, uh, now, of course, if people want to type him as an INFP in Maya Diggs, I don't have much to to comment on that. No, fair enough. I mean, there are some interesting quotes that got up here. Um, okay. So here's is an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> hang on, where is it? Ah, oh, I've lost it. Ah, hang on. Um, I was the antithesis of my character in a streetcar named Desire, Stanley Kowalski. I was sensitive by nature, and he was coarse. A man with unerring animal instincts and intuitions. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, what can I say? I mean, right? Okay. If he says, if he said, I, I, I remember that he said that, right? Mm. He's still, right? He's still. Uh, that is the role that made him famous, mm -hmm. and he created that role. And, uh, and nobody, I mean, that I know of to play this role later, managed to, to, to convey it as well as, as he did. And sure, the problem, of course, the what I'm talking about, right? Because uh, I, I have read the play, I have seen the movie. Obviously, this Stanley Kowalski mm. is, a, well, he, he is a, he's a, the character is an SLE, yes. but he's also a jerk, not to use a, another stronger word. Yeah, right. And even if, and I, and I would say that if Marlon Brando could understand the character so well, so that he could act him so well, mm. um, so that he's identified with it, would suggest he can understand people like uh, a, a character like Kowalski in, uh, instinctively. Mm. Uh, we uh, however, being in Unless being of the same type doesn't mean that he be, you behave in the same sense yeah. as a type, hmm. uh, as, as, as like the same person, right? It means that you may, uh, it, it does mean a thing that you are able to understand the type's motivations. It doesn't mean that you agree with the actions of, of, of the type, right? So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, of course, the problem is a kind of quote, right? Is that, uh, okay, yeah, it, the it is the opposite, right? Okay, yeah. so the, the obvious follow up. Would be to ask him, okay, Marlon, what exactly do you mean by that, right? Mm. And of course, uh, and whether his his uh, his uh, his answer would would would, would be one <laughs> that shows, no, I, I have absolutely nothing to do with with Kowalski, or simply if it would be okay, but I would not be a, a, as much of a jerk as Kowalski. That's not the story. No. Fair okay, enough. so that, that's, a, that's a problem, right? Mm. I mean. Um, okay, I do. I, I do think that um, I think I would like to look more into Marlon Brando more in the future, just to see where these quotes came from and how they factor in to build a more coherent. Uh, um, look, the problem is right. Um, mm. That's the thing, right? I mean, the problem with isolated quotes, and of course, yeah. we, sometimes we use isolated quotes to type people as well. But is that? It all depends what was meant, right? Mm. Uh, if you look at at uh, any extensive inter interview, right, of Marlon Brando, right, you see that his uh, his his answers go in, in several directions, mm. right, and they are often <laughs> uh, 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 and you can offer a contradictory, right. Um, and for instance, of course, uh, in something like. Kowalski, right? Marlon Brando, of course, you know, wouldn't have said, okay, of course, that's, that's me, because uh, to annoy him, he basically wanted to say, no, of course, that's not me, mm -hmm. right? Actually, uh, um, and actually, I have, to, also, I have to say as well, Marlon Brando, he, something that's very, very consistent mm -hmm. in his book, in his memoirs, and also in his uh, interviews, uh, any interview, I think, that you see on TV, whether it is with uh, uh, Dick Avett, or another one whose name I forgot, mm. 
or uh, he gave actually a, a quite long interview in the in 1980, I think, mm. uh, to Playboy when Playboy interviews were a big thing. I don't know this you are, mm-hmm. um, and he had uh, he, he disliked. He really disliked talking about acting as such, right? Mm. Uh, he did. Uh, he is not. He what he is really disliked is when people ask him about acting, about his characters. Okay, what do you think about mm. about his characters? What are you thinking? Can you explain me uh, what, uh, what you what made you get into into the mind of of Kowalski or uh, or 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 of uh, Cornell Kurtz, etc. In Apocalypse Now or whatever. He he hated talking about this. Oh yes, or about his character in you know the other movie that made him because uh, Brando he was sort he had a sort of exile in, in his career, not a, a gap in his career. Essentially, yeah. in the in 1962, I think he made a mutiny on the bounty, mm. and he got the reputation of behaving badly during that mm. during, during the film of that movie. So he was sort of blacklisted, mm. not really blacklisted, but he got the reputation of being very difficult actor to work with and in, during the in the uh, in the for the rest of the 60s he was actually he wasn't really having a good time uh, yeah. uh, finding movies and he came back in 1972 mm. with the, uh, where he played uh, Don Corleone in The Godfather I saw that recently actually yeah and also uh, about the same time at The Godfather he made another movie which Became a very successful, controversial, which was mm. uh, the last tango in Paris. Mm. Have you seen that movie? No, I haven't seen that one. Uh, but you know it. You know, you know what it is? No, actually, I don't. No. Wow. It is a, the movie is called The Last Tango in Paris, right? Mm. Uh, and it was released, I think, very, very. It was filmed and released very closely to The Godfather. I think uh. the year following it. Is directed by Bernard Bertolucci, the same guy who directed uh, directed later the the Last Emperor. If you know that one, oh, the one in in China, correct. Yes. And uh, and last time in Paris is a is, is, is it was uh, all filmed in Paris, of yeah. course. And a lot of the dialogue of uh, was improvised, right? Uh, the director. Just told okay, just start talking about whatever goes through your mind, etc. And some people said that Brando had revolutionized uh, uh, acting again by that movie, right? Hmm. However, when Brando talks about the movie or even wrote about it, what he said was to this day, I have no idea what that movie is about. Right now, whether that was a pose or not is very difficult to know. To know, right? But what the point I'm making is that he didn't really go uh, for what today maybe actors do, which is to say, "Oh, I, lo- I take acting so seriously. Oh, I have. Uh, oh, I have. Really, I, re- I really want to talk about this character. I don't know how to deep go deep yeah. this character. I have researched my character." Yeah. And Brando disliked talking about that, and he essentially said that uh, acting was not an art. It was a craft, mm. and uh, it was uh, for him. It was uh, just a very good way of making a living because uh, he couldn't have made any. He, if he uh, if he didn't become an actor, he would have become some working class profession uh, of some kind. But and in, in which, by no means, you'd be able to, as he put it, to mm. uh, to to sit his behind on an island and do nothing the whole day if he chose to. <laughs> I think I've seen very similar quotes from Anthony Hopkins. Mm. Mm. Oh, by the way, also play uh, Anthony Hopkins. By the way, he took over the role of Kowalski when, 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 when mm. in, in, in the theater when Brando moved on. Interesting, right? So that yeah. is, so, so, that, so as I just want to put it there. Um, so uh, and so basically, right? Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, okay, Mal- Mal- okay, Malo Brando. He uh, when he could be gotten into talking about acting. He had a few tricks, which, uh, for uh, for instance, you, he famously he famously refused to to memorize the, the, his lines, mm-hmm. right? 
what you would do, he would insist uh, that uh, there would be little cue cards of his lines placed in a strategic bits, a strategic areas of the uh, of of the set, right? Uh, so that he would read it on the spot, uh, even as he was about to, to to read his lines, to to, to speak his lines, and mm. and uh, other actors who who saw him doing that either thought he was nuts or just lazy or unprofessional. <laughs> uh, if you search for it, there is an interview with uh, Terence Stamp, mm -hmm. right, where he. Uh, he's, he's asked about it, right? Uh, uh, and he and he, and he saw Brando doing that, and, and he was also surprised and, and uh, mm. what what the hell he was doing. And of course, he would say that okay, the, he did that because that would give him a degree of spontaneity in that his reading does on the spot. He doesn't make, has to make the effort of remembering this, etc. He just reading on the spot. He can indicate himself just to to let him flow, mm. right? Uh, okay, so. I mean, that's what you say. I mean, if you whether it was just an excuse for not to have to memorize the lines, who knows, right? Or he liked to improvise it. Impro uh, uh, for instance, he improvised mm. a lot of his lines in Apocalypse Now. Mm. Right? But his uh, explanation for that in his memoirs was, oh, I was very good in bullshitting Francis Ford Coppola, so I, got, uh, I could have my way with my lines. I see. So, so yeah. I mean that, that's a thing, right? Uh, Very uh, I I always I, I, I. So, but is Brando just being a, 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 a slightly being a troll? Because that's that's today. Maybe he was doing what today would call being a troll. Who knows? I don't know that, right? Um, yeah. So uh, what I, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, Brando, he, to my knowledge, was never caught into discussing, uh, uh, in, in seriously discussing what it is to be an actor or what it is to, or about characters, yeah. the way that you get more conventional actors doing, uh, as example, Laurence Olivier or yeah. Ian McKellen, for instance, right? Or Benedict Cumberbatch, etc. We can mm -hmm. get these guys to talk about mm -hmm. actors and acting and indicator. And of course, you couldn't get Brando to do that because he himself said, oh, I don't really take the, all of this so seriously. <laughs> I see. Right. Um, uh, the. Uh, well, he was very good, though, into in uh, uh, into getting his way as mm -hmm. his star power increased. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, a, good, a user F and you, of course, in, in Mutiny of the Bounty, he probably overplayed his hand, and so he was sent to exile for for a few years. He really managed <laughs> to, to climb back into 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 his. Hmm? He was marooned for a little while. Yeah, I mean, uh, he he didn't really do mem memorable movies uh, between uh, Mutiny mm. of the Bounty and the Bounty and uh, in 1962 or 63, I think, mm. and the and uh, the Godfather 1972. Mm. And also, also, as someone who's actually only just finished watching Godfather Part 2, I wonder if... I think people often say that Al Pacino is probably an LSI. And he was very likely playing an LSI in Michael Corleone. And I wonder if he would have probably have said, disassociated himself in description from the character he was playing, because Michael Corleone is especially ruthless. Um, look, I mean... Look, uh, well, I mean, who who is going to say that they really are? Uh, uh, they really like a mm. character on the screen who's a gangster, right, right or a murderer? Um, uh, uh, but of course, that's not the case of of somebody like Kowalski, right? Mm. Uh, in the uh, okay, he was okay, he was a uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, he was a rapist, but not a murderer. Okay, so the, of course, it's, it's almost as bad. But the point is, who would say? Uh, I mean, you, you see it, right? I don't know that that's a very helpful uh, comparison. True. Yeah, fair. Um, but uh, the point of making, right, is that, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, can, I, I can make a case about S. Leaf Malon Brando, right? I, I now mm. I have some fun uh, 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 digressing a bit about telling uh, stories about him. Uh, but uh, I, you, uh, I mean, uh, the problem is that I 
as you know, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know what, for, for instance, if you say that in an MBTI, you'd be an FP. Okay, I could make a case that, okay, he was, uh, uh, he, uh, you, in, some, in some ways, you could say he was a social, a social introvert, so I, he could be, of course, irrational in the, in the MBTI term or perceiving, which is P, so I could see that. Uh, and uh, intuitive in the sense that he was concerned about uh, bigger things. Of course, he had this idea that he wanted to be, uh, so you, you, you are focused in what today you call progressive causes, not how they spoke at this time. So for instance, he wanted to, he wanted to be a, a spokesperson for the plight of Native Americans in the US, etc. Uh, so N and F, I mean F. Uh, uh, okay, I suppose uh, you could, uh, then you could make an argument. A single, uh, so, but uh, but again, again, I mean, uh, uh, I think MBTI is a different discussion from socionics, as you know. Yeah, and we also you know that that progressive side to him came out in later life rather than being an early thing, and it may have been influenced Sorry? from his mother. Sorry, and also we know that progressive element. The element of the Native Americans, I think you said it came from his mother. Yeah, I don't remember that, uh, even though I remember that. Look, uh, Brando, look, I mean, let's say mm. that being something of a troll mm. is an SLE characteristic, right? Yes. And he was, a, Marlon Brando was a troll, only nobody uses them these days. Mm. For instance, right, uh, he, he made a movie called uh, uh, the two the movies in, in, in the I think in the late 60s, I think he made a movie called it has two names called K Mada or Burn, right? Okay, and it was filmed in Colombia, I think. And the director was a guy called Julio Pontecorvo. And Pontecorvo was the director of a very famous movie called The Battle of Algiers, right? Okay, and he tells the story. That when he showed up in the first day of shooting, right there in Colombia, Ponte Corvo was the director, was like directing, wearing something like a, a, a yellow raincoat. Yes. Right? And, it, and it was hot sun, right? And Brando, he, uh, he saw that and he thought, what the hell is this? And he went to talk to the director and said, Gillo, are you okay? Uh, uh, do you realize you're wearing a raincoat in the hot sun? And says, no, no, no. And Pontecorvo says, no, it's because I'm a bit, a bit, uh, I, I am a bit uh, uh, cold, etc. And later, uh, some some people uh, he asked about, and uh, an assistant director says, no, uh, he's very, Gilo is very superstitious. He was wearing that raincoat when he was shooting his very his first or second movie, and so he now he thinks that he has to start. Uh, directing all his movies were in the raincoat, <laughs> right? And so he realized yeah. he learned that Gillo, the director, was Pontecorvo, very superstitious, right? Yes. And then he, uh, 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 Brando found that absurd and hilarious. So, sometime later, when uh, he was a bit, he wanted to, he was a bit annoyed with uh, uh, director. He basically, he took a mirror. He went to his car, the mirror, and a hammer. He went to Pontecovo's trailer and he says, Hey, Gilo, come out here, look at this. And then when he came out, he broke the, the mirror with a hammer in front of him. <laughs> I remember you told me this one. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> I remember you told me that one. Yeah. But uh, I mean, that is that Brando tells it, that in his book, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, of, of course, many types could do that, right? I'm just saying yeah. that he, he had this trollish, uh, he had this trollish side to him. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and so a lot of the things he said uh, about being an actor or about uh, actor and, and being non nonsensical, etc., or is not, is, uh, was not, uh, is not uh, art, uh, who knows? What, well, who, yeah. who knows what he actually believes about this? That's all mm -hmm. I can say. No, fair enough. Um, definitely would seem unlikely for an EII to be doing stuff like that with hammers and mirrors and superstition. Um, um, well, I mean, an, an EII, I think he, an EII, I, I think, would be more concerned uh, in making sure that what, 
the, uh, uh, an EIE would be more concerned about uh, would not would not be, be far less likely to essentially say that what they're good at is essentially not art or pointless. Yeah, yeah, that's also true. An EIE certainly. Um, yeah, I, I as well. I'd say I think that'd be very unusual. Um, okay, so I wanted to have a look because it's, it's mentioned by. Uh, Someone called Savannah. She wanted us to take a look at Caravaggio. Oh, okay. Mm. I confess. I mean, I, I don't know anything about him, to be honest. As a person, no. right? Actually, I, 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 I had the pleasure of going to one of uh, a major exhibition of his paintings in the National Gallery. Yeah. In two thousand and uh, two thousand and five, I think. Mm. Uh, and. But uh, I, I don't know anything about about. about I mean, he he was a, a thing, he was a, a, an artist. He was a, obviously. I mean, of course, he was a lint painter, and uh, he, as a person, I think he was very difficult and very could be violent. Yeah. Uh, but that's all, that's all I know, really. Uh, uh, interestingly, I learned quite a bit about a little bit about Caravaggio when I was in Malta, and I happened to see an exhibition of some of his work at the um, cathedral in Valletta mm -hmm. and very much known for this use of red. Every painting had something in red to draw attention. It was a signature. But the main thing about that was talked about him was that he kept on returning back to Malta from Italy because he kept on murdering people, kept on getting into oh, and killing people. So he used to mm -hmm. run off back to Malta. He really liked his paintings and he commissioned some very uh, well-paid um, religious art but it says in his biography seemed to live a tempestuous life frequently getting involved in brawls in 1606 during a game of rackets he quarreled with his opponent and stabbed him to death he was forced to flee to flee Rome settling in Naples then traveling to Malta and Sicily and around southern Italy many of his paintings from this time are dark and melancholy such as Salome receives the head of Saint John the Baptist and you see in his um, that painting it's very much it feels like a dirty deed being done in the street. The way it's um, the way it's painted, and has the so yeah. So which type are you thinking of? I'm wondering. I almost certainly think an extra sensation oriented type. So someone is very much impulsive, who acts mm -hmm. without necessarily thinking about the consequences. Mm. And... Well, or, or acts before he can think about the consequences. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Sure. So, just from that, I would have wondered maybe an SLE or an SEE. -E. And there certainly there is that physicality in his paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that and certainly um, a harsher, also more melancholy side to his paintings. Which makes me wonder. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, as I said, I mean, I, I, I cannot claim to know that much about him, so I, can, I, I, I cannot Ooh. discuss uh, his, his type model. I found, a good, I found a good quote as well. All works, no matter what or by whom painted, are nothing but bagatelles and chi childish trifles, unless they are made and painted from life, and there can be nothing better than to follow nature. Yeah. Mm. So I think I can see this the sensation there. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure beyond that. I'm not sure whether well, SLE or SLE. On the SLE. other hand, right, uh, yeah. uh, we, I believe we have typed Picasso as SLE, right? I don't think actually... I don't know if we actually went so far as to do that, but I've seen the argument made. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen the main characteristics of Picasso. The yeah, Picasso, of course, uh, in yeah. some ways, uh, he was... He'd be, uh, he, in some ways, he would be... Uh, he would be... Not be more... He would be different... Mm. And Caravaggio, he used to be more, in some ways, he'd be more like Marlon Brando, right? Mm. Uh, not that I'd like typing by comparison, I'm just saying that, but of course, his sty um, style of painting uh, became, of course, in his great period of fame, very different from the style of, of Caravaggio. Yes. Of course, of course, and during the time uh, Caravaggio lived, I don't think there was a scope for somebody like, uh, to paint like, like Picasso. Mm, no, nah. no, of course, no. I doubt so, Cubism would have gotten very far. Mm. Yeah. 
Anyway, sorry. Now, um, sorry uh, if, if the time has flown, but anything, anything else on the agenda or, or the um, schedule? Let's see if anyone else has any. Oh, Osama Al Gamdi has suggested that we type Simon Sinek, Brendan Burchard, and John Maxwell. Unfortunately, I do not know any of these people. Um, I could take a look. Did you know any of these? Uh, John Maxwell, is that a physicist? Hang on. Um, John Maxwell, let me look that up. Hang on a second. Oh, no, I think he's an American author, speaker, and pastor who has written many uh, books. Okay. Primarily on leadership. I have no, I have no, sorry, I have, we can I have no idea. I will have to do some research before. Yeah. No, fair enough. Let's see if there's anyone else recommended for us to type who we know a little bit about, but haven't actually typed yet. Um, hmm. Someone said Vladimir Putin. Um, I know we've benchmarked Putin. No, but uh, that's okay. But um... oh, hang on! I think someone's actually joined. Ah, hey Raymond. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? Eh, all right. Have you ever met Peter before, Raymond? No, I don't think I have. Peter, meet right, Raymond. Right. Raymond. Peter. So Raymond is right. one of the newer members of the team. He's also been helping. Um, been sort of indirectly involved in a Miami group we're trying to put together. Um, uh, Miami. Okay, cool. So, Raymond, what did you think about Vladimir Putin? I don't know about. I don't know enough about him. No, nah, fair enough. Um, let's see. Let me think. Hmm. For some reason, I'm going to say something like LSI. Yeah. Um, and why do you, and why do you think LSI? I don't have that much. No, I don't have that much. Uh, not for Vladimir. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump is SLE for sure, though. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, we we think uh, uh, we we ha we have also typed uh, Putin as SLI. Sorry, mm -hmm. LSI. Sorry, LSI. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there was an old Russian typing which was ILI, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that, Jack. I remember that one being given. But I think it was not given. based on him as a person, mm -hmm. but it was based on a, in a sort of a type progression theory or something. Oh, oh yes, how it's sort of gamma taking over from beta. Maybe yeah. Moved on from Gorbachev, and he was part of that sort well, of. Okay. No, well, not yeah. from Gorbachev, but from Yeltsin actually. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Beta. Okay. Then. okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the same people who typed Yautzin as an LAE, right? So, okay, I was just yeah. mentioning that. No, no, I, I think... Yeah. No, no, I think, I think this the case for LSI for Putin is quite good. Yeah. I think this is the guy who very happy in a very structured, organized system, like... Um, oh, goodness, what's the name of the secret service of the Russians? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, the old one... In the Soviet Union, was KGB. KGB, that's it. So it, yeah, later it, later it became the uh, uh, the FSB. I don't know if it has another name today. Mm. Yes, he did. He certainly um, K achieved more power through the KGB. Very comfortable, sort of very structured um, system where he rose up. He himself is someone who made his mark on Russia by bringing a clear sense of law, dividing up. Russian to administrative divisions. Yes. Um, and he's someone who's clearly very capable of being ruthless, uh, yeah. very able to assert himself with the right people, but has nuance in that. You can see him in interviews how he's far more, it'd be more friendly with, with, with say, um, um, with Kim Jong un. When he meets with him, you can see he's far softer in his body language than he is with, with um, past American presidents. And when he would meet with Angela Merkel, he even brought along uh, his dog, knowing that she'd be like be afraid of the dog. She heard, he heard she had canophobia. And so this is someone who knows how to intimidate other people, knows how to establish dominance over most other people. And reports of journalists meeting him have been awed by his physical presence. Even though he is actually quite a short man, he's not very big. He's not very 
um, physically imposing in the taking up space way. And well, okay, but uh, of course he's also. Uh, 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 I, I, I think I think he was a champion of uh, judo fights. Yes, and of course he had extensive military training, etc. Yeah. So all of that, uh, all of that helps. Yes, he's definitely physically powerful in sort of wiry uh, sort of way. He also enjoys showing off his physical strength in a sort of macho way, riding um, topless horseback. Um, and it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if you. There is also a slightly ridiculous video somewhere, mm. which shows him and his sidekick Mevdev, uh, yeah. uh, doing muscular training together in a in a gym. <laughs> and, and, and then afterwards, they sit together and drink tea. They they have tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sort of that macho, <laughs> extroverted sensation. Yeah. Requirement of uh, no, in but, Russia. Um, actually, um, uh, there is a book which I have read, which mm. is uh, a book-length interview of Oliver Stone interviewing uh, Vladimir Putin, mm. right? And uh, you do get, uh, mm. of course, put uh, you do get uh, uh, an it does, does give some interesting information about Putin, but also about Stone because I think Stone made a fool of himself in that in that interview. You, but that was out realizing it. Yes, I, I think also. Just... I'll go. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying. Okay. Uh, no, no, go ahead. And also, um, how he's very carefully managed his own continuance of power, how he organized and arranged for Medvedev just to take over as a legal loophole, while still mm -hmm. continuing to manage things more behind the scenes. And you think he switched to prime minister while Medvedev was president. And then he moved yeah. back to take over again as president when he was legally able to. He's very much yeah, mad. Yeah. That, that was long -term. Around the constitution which prevented in theory uh, uh, more than two consecutive terms, yes. Yes. So he knows how to think long term strategically, but also has that physical assertive presence, which would make sense for an LSI, but not an ILI or an SLE. Um, yeah. And the extroverted ethics, yeah, we, I think what everyone can point to is that his extroverted ethics is not particularly strong. He gives the impression of being quite a cold um, individual in terms of his expression. But he also, As an individual, how to, yes. but he also knows how to be, will take advice in that area, will do PR stuff, um, has, doesn't seem to have much issue with it, although he does find it a bit frustrating at times. He'll do PR campaigns in a sort of tough man, strong, silent type. Yeah, uh, yes, but uh, sure, but the thing is that he, I don't think he, I think that he doesn't, he's not, I, I don't think he's trying too hard, okay, his, yeah. his PR, his image is that one as mentioned before, mm. he's a strong, physically active, tough guy, yeah. right, which has, some of that is based on, on, on reality, of course, nobody's suggesting yeah. that he's a, he's a physical uh, wimp, yes. uh, but obviously, he is not trying to be somebody who is not based at all on 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 whom he is, right? Uh, so mm. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a it's a big, it's, I don't I don't think it's, I don't think he needs to make a major effort in this area. And I think and I think more recently, definitely, he's been comfortable being pretty much uh, himself. Yeah, no, I I agree. So um, now is that anybody else? Um, so far, not yet. Vladimir wants to know who we've discussed so far. I say just um, briefly: Elon Musk, uh, Donald Trump, Caravaggio, and Vladimir Putin. What did they? What did they type? Uh, Caravaggio. Well, we're not <clears throat> we're not entirely certain yet, but we I I I think an extrovert sensation leading type is probable. Yeah. Uh, whether SCE or SLE, I'm not sure. My my gut is more of an SLE, but I'm yeah. not. I, I'm not really, I'm not necessarily really sure about it. And I, I found one quote from him saying that art is basically childish and meaningless unless it comes from reality. Um, yeah, I think from from what I've learned about um, Caravaggio, I think I think SLE, and also his his art style is very like, it, it seems like it's a lot about drama. 
there is a dramatic feel to it yes yeah to me that 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 shows more of a of a beta feel than anything i don't feel like there's much about him that's gamma there's not much about him that's he seems like he's all about like thrill of a moment um and drama more so than any type of usefulness productivity anything like that so i feel and the more you study the more the more you learn about him uh the more you see that the more you see that in his art you see that in his life it's mm. so it seems to be more everything about drama and uh just kind of like that like that type of quote like it's very mm. meaningless unless it's very like harsh and gritty and real type of thing yeah i mean looking at his art there is there, there are usually dramatic moments in 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 his really in his religious work say judith beheading hollow furnies an example mm -hmm or um, the beheading of John the Baptist. So violent scenes, he frequently uses red. Something is red in it, which um, is his signature in, in his painting. Either it's a red cloak or it's the blood of someone who's being killed. Um, and it, you get the feel that there's a clear mood being set, but it's often quite a grim or grisly mood. It's not a, it's not a really a positive, none, none of his work is lighthearted. Um, but it, it does have a certain mood being conveyed here. Yeah, so that's um. Yeah, so I, I think Beta could make sense. There's certainly a harsher emotionality in his work. Um, I would I would find SCE to be more more uh, productivity based because there is a TE. Yeah, I mean they would they would want some sort of they would want some sort of use from things, I guess. Where, whereas with, with Caravaggio, it seems more like it's just kind of like, like harsh expression for the sake of harsh, harsh expression. And yeah. very harsh, very harsh expression. Yes, it is very harsh. And he lived a life where, where he was kind of like, even during his time where he kind of hung around the delinquents, I guess, uh, frequently, he was into very, he was into all sorts of like drinking and debauchery and all sorts of things, so. Mm. Yeah, certainly. I think I could even, I don't know, show a typical sort of Caravaggio painting. Let's see if I can find. Uh, um, is, is I remember it? something yeah. about Caravaggio. Yeah? Do you remember the Mel Gibson movie of a few years back, The Passion of the Christ? Yes. Um, I saw later a discussion on TV about that involving Chris Ferrichens and, uh, and some okay. others where, yeah. and they were, of course, they were bashing uh, Gibson, right? Because of the excessive graphic violence uh, in, the, in the movie about Christ, okay? Yes. And the point I'm making is that one of the guys participating, which was, who was an art critic, forgot his name, mm. uh, you can still find the movie if you Google Christopher Hitchens, uh, uh, Passion of the Christ, Mel Gibson, I think you'll find it. Um, but the point I'm making is that the art critic said that the proof that Mel Gibson was nuts was, according to him, that Mel Gibson says, oh, I want to, I want my film to, to be like a Caravaggio painting. Mm. However, the critic said that if you look at the actual paintings of Caravaggio of the crucifixion of Christ, they, those are not violent, right? And they, they do not, are not graphic violence about the physical aspect of the crucifixion. They were more about the spirit, spirit, spiritual side of it. Mm. Now, yes. I find it interesting because uh, it seems that Gibson was, like the, you guys talking about, he had in his mind the overall image of the paintings of Caravaggio. Yes. And he just projected that into paintings about the crucifixion. Although if you look at his painting of crucifixion, they do not have this kind of violence uh, that he was put, this kind of graphic violence that he decided to put in his movie, right? Yeah. Um, so he got a sense of, it looks like he, Gibson got a sense of the overall approach of Caravaggio to art without paying too much attention of the paintings that Caravaggio did about the crucifixion specifically. However, yeah. when he, however, when he says when he uses argument in a movie about 
the crucifixion of Christ, where Gibson was very graphically violent, and if he uses the Caravaggio argument, it does make him sound crazy, because if you look at it, it does make any sense. Yes, and if I, if I have a, let me see if I can find, um, hang on, this, let me see if I can find one of um, Caravaggio of the crucifixion. I do, I do want to say something else about Caravaggio. Yeah. Um, another thing that I've noticed, is that he likes a lot of his paintings from what i remember um where he likes to do things like as they're happening he likes to paint the moments while they're happening he likes the action of the moments so there's a bunch of different moments that are not the aftermath of the moment or the beat or the or the preparation of the moment but it's like during the moment is happening so he seems to be a big fan of taking action is something else I would add to value to add. Definitely value. Oh, definitely. And that's what that comes from his quote that art is almost, you know, childish and valueless unless it is taken from reality. And I think if I'm looking at his work, it seems to me it, if it represents real action, if it represents something being done in mm. real time. And we see in each of his paintings, there is an action being done. It's not just a still. It, it, even in um, we, we, even with um, the Last Supper, as a good example here. It's um, I wonder if I can find the picture actually. I think this is it. Yes, um, there's a bit. Let me show this picture of um, of Jesus at the. I think it's the Last Supper. I might be I might be wrong. If it's the Last Supper. Um, no, Supper at Emmaus, that's it. Supper at Emmaus. Let me, um, let me just share this so you can see what I mean. Hang on. Okay. So you see what I mean here? Again, there's, there's, there's clearly action in the middle of doing something. You see... Um, the fellow on the right has got his arms spread out. Jesus is pointing. Um, the, the, the fellow in his seat is sort of in the, in the process of rising up. Oh. The rabbi, the beheading, is in the middle of the beheading. This is in the middle of them moving as well. So there's certainly a dynamic uh, feel. Yeah, to be honest, it doesn't seem to me to be that different from other typing, other paintings of the time, to be honest with you. Uh, no, fair enough. Hmm. But yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I can't. I can't. For I can't yet form a strong argument for say SCE over SLE over SCE. But I do think there's that a sense of mood there. And I mean, for an SLE, there would be strong extroverted logic somewhere. So no, saying. look. First of all, right? I. I certainly don't, from what I know of his you know, it's interesting because this uh, in London in 2005, I think, yeah. and I remember looking at what they said about his life. The first thing I remember thinking at the time, oh, that's a guy, <clears throat> it's not the guy I like to cross. Yes. Right? I do remember that. And so I... Uh, I have no problem with. I have absolutely no, 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 you know, F kind of being in a. Mm. Yeah, no, fair enough. I, I think the idea of someone who lived more sort of violent, more they impulsive. Were, a lot of his paintings yeah. are painting on, on commission, right? And uh, not yeah. all of them are expressions of their uh, unrestrained artistic preference, right? You just have to take a, a, a look at a more. And of course, you have to look at other paintings in, in the in the time. For instance, I was actually looking. Mm. He does have something in common, I think, with the paintings of Titian, which, of course, was mm. he was about the same time, right? Titian and Caravaggio were about the same time. Caravaggio was in the late 16th century, beginning of the 17th century. And I yes. think Titian was about the same time as well. Yes.
So I've, I've been... one has to take into account uh, the, 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 what was expected for, of painters at the time as well. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I remember studying a optician a little bit, but from what I remember, he's <laughs> nowhere near as graphic like violent. Yeah. No, no, sure. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying he did. Uh, I mentioned Titian because I remember Titian not because of this graphic thing, but more because of the painting that uh, Jack showed of the guys uh, having well, the guys together on the table, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Titian, he was not uh, 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 as graphic as as Caravaggio. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm... But I was talking in the, in the general, but the overall, the, the other general actor who is painting, I think we have to look at Caravaggio in the context of 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 his time that's what i'm saying yeah fair enough i mean yes this paint for instance by titian is certainly dynamic i see yeah, that yeah, that's what i mean but it is brighter. clearly more elegant uh softer if you yes. will uh than caravaggio that's clear yes it hasn't got that sort of brutal candor mm -hmm. of uh of caravaggio no yeah of course yeah mm. And it's much right, less realistic and, and, and too. Titian, and, and Titian, sorry, Titian was a a, a court painter, right? And Caravaggio mm. was never a court painter, if I, uh, that's, that's mistaken. Yeah, no, I yes. think Caravaggio so, uh, would probably be a bit too infamous on, uh, to be made a court painter. Probably. Yeah, Caravaggio was probably might say that Titian was a sellout. Yeah. Hmm. No, that makes sense. Hmm. Titian okay. also chose some. What, what I noticed was, and from different um, paintings as well, is that Titian chose to paint like mythological things in yes. a very like fantasy esque way, whereas Caravaggio really much more enjoyed reality. Yes, I think for Caravaggio, the the stories of the of the Bible, this was this is history. So he was painting mm -hmm. real things and uh, that happened and conveying the actions as they happened in a sort of rather brutal way and no, sure but uh, just to say, Titian, he also was uh, he also was uh, just painted also he was a uh, painted straightforward portraits right so that there's, there's that as well yeah i mean caravaggio did straightforward portraits okay yeah they, they all had to, to to make money of course right. yeah of course um yeah exactly like portrait of Pope Paul V. Oh, he did the he did the Pope. Yes, it's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Um. Okay. Now, oh, Raymond. Also, just, sorry. Yeah. Also, a very famous painting of uh, Charles V on horse. Right. Uh, that's probably one of the most famous paint, most known paintings. Yeah. Look at that one. Yeah. If you look at the, if you look at the Wikipedia page of Titian, that's already that's very very uh, that's there. Let's see. On a horse, yes. I can't find one of him on a horse. Um, I can see one of definitely Charles V, um, in red with um, his father. No, no, his son, Philip II. Is that by yeah, it's, I mean, that's okay. The, the equestrian portrait of Charles V. Hmm, let me see. And it's interesting it. because it also has the same kind of dark colors that Caravaggio liked, for instance. Yes, I think this we have that, so that, that doesn't seem. Oh, here we go. Uh, equestrian portrait of Charles V. Correct. Yeah, there is, it has got the darkness to it, yeah. Yeah, and it's got some of the red as well. It's not. Yeah. No, that makes sense. But I mean, look, I mean, I'm not, I'm not disputing anything you are saying, right? I mean, uh, 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 it looks like Caravaggio was a, 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 an F1 type, and actually, I'll be inclined to SLE as well. So I'm yeah. not really arguing about that. No, yeah, fair. That's all I know. I don't have a strong argument either way. Um, I'm trying to think who else we could take a look at. Does um, we could look yeah, at so for another, let's continue for another ten minutes. Yeah. Oh, have you ever gone? Sorry? So uh, I think we actually I think we have run a bit over time. Did you want to finish at nine thirty? You want to continue, Peter? No, no. Let's uh, let's do it on ten minutes. That's fine. Ten minutes. Okay, fine. Um, in which case, let's see. 
Someone's asking, Peter, if you are an ENTJ in the Myers Briggs as well as Socionics. Uh, people do like Mike Briggs, right? Hmm. Okay, uh, I ask if I am an ENTJ. Yes. Uh, okay, I would say no, and I'll explain why. Mm. Right, because again, because I mean, uh, again, it has to do with definitions, right? Mm. And uh, uh, in the in MBTI, or at least in my bricks, or at least in the pop version of MBTI, which is the one you found online, because I, I say I, I mean very, I, I being very precise about an answer because I do realize that. There is a uh, my for people who have access to actual Maya Briggs uh, uh, manuals or whatever. I've often heard the the argument, oh, but well, the Maya Briggs itself is is much more complex than what we see in the pop versions of the internet, etc., etc. I, I don't dispute that. All I can say is that the Maya Briggs uh, theory and the MBTI I am familiar with is the stuff that you mm. can find fairly easily uh, online. And that means that the uh, they have and the when they go for the descriptions of extroverts, uh, the, the definition of, of extroverts seems to be or is really the classical one, which means, oh, you are a very, you have a, a broad, wide social mm -hmm. circle and you are energized by interaction with many people. Right. Mm -hmm. That is the. Uh, I, st I still think that's the more default definition of uh, of extrovert in Maya Briggs. Now, to me, that in socionics, it has to do more about somebody who values extroverted feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't mm -hmm. certainly. I don't. If you look at the MBTI definitions, again, the at least the the pop ones, I'm certainly more like an MBTI introvert than uh, an MBTI extrovert. And I certainly identify more with the descriptions of INTJ, of MBTI, than of uh, ENTJ. Mm. Uh, so the type that I uh, uh, identify more is the INTJ. However, uh, interesting enough, when I look at the time when I was looked more into uh, Maya Briggs and similar, which has already been a long time since I said you don't, I remember thinking that with all its his uh, questionable approaches, I thought at the time that Kirzi, uh, who had a variation of Hoss and BTI, I thought that I was more, I could be more of a, I thought that the ENTJ as a scriber crazy was uh, more, I thought it was a more logical maybe version of the, because the ENTJ of, of Maya Briggs seems more like a, a socionics SLE, while Kirze, he made a point of say, of emphasizing that all of the NT types were similar, mm. right? Which of course makes sense. Now, there is something else as well, which I want to point out. I don't know if people still talk about it, but um, some time ago, well, now it's probably 15 years, uh, when the Russians, socialists, started to take an interest in MBTI, uh, one of them, I think it was Dmitry Litov, he did this interesting exercise. Yeah. He got yes, copies of typical MBTI description of types uh, got, uh, got a Russian translations of them and it distributed mm. and during a, a socionics conference in I think it was in Kiev but I may be wrong mm. he distributed that uh, that, that list that, 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 that profiles uh, to Russian socionists, Russian socialists mm. and this, this descriptions did not have the types name he says okay you I have now I gave you copies of 16 descriptions of types. Yeah. Could you please tell me which type do you think this description would correspond to in socionics? Mm. And what is interesting is that 
uh, the socialists tended to the Russian socialists tended to type the ENTJ type uh, as mo mostly less SLE, yeah, and the INTJ type they tended to type it as LIE, not as LII, yeah. Right, so it's, uh, so the po I, I gave this convoluted answer to explain. So basically, no, I don't really, uh, uh, I don't really correspond to the ENT, the, the most of the ENTJs. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think I correspond to the MBTI idea of, mm. ENT, of ENTJ, at least not the ones familiar with. Yeah. And I gave you some more background to why that makes sense. I think. Yes, and we can also see that. Um... Damon, who's one of the um, one of the members of our team, has often typed himself as an ENTJ in Myers Briggs, but has found himself to be an SLE in the socionic system. So we can see this this sort of um, flow across the types between Myers Briggs and socionics. That um, yeah, I mean that is why uh, uh, I mean I, I mean uh, I'm saying this for the sake of. People might be, be listening. I I don't think it makes much sense to try to find a, a, a correspondence between socionics types and and mm -hmm. uh, and myobrics types, right? They're similar enough to be de uh, deceptive, and in many cases there is a, a, a overlap, right? Uh, but they're not really. Uh, they, they, they don't really help each other, right? Mm. Uh, it's not very helpful to use Oceonics and keep referring back to, to Maya Briggs. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, um, let's see if there's anyone else who want to type. I know that, um, I think I'll need to look at maybe Simon Sinek later because I, I, I just don't Ooh. know. One of the people who was, was um, suggested earlier was Simon Sinek. Maybe we can quickly look at him. Um, I don't even know who that is. Who? A British American author, motivational speaker, author of five books, including Start with Why and The Infinite Game. Um, not sure. Never heard. Uh, what, what, what author? Simon Sinek. That's one person who was rep who was uh, suggested earlier on as, uh, as someone we could look at. Well. Look, without knowing anything else about him, which I don't, right? Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, motivational speakers, right? Mm. The most obvious type for that is EAE, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. without knowing anything else. Yes. But uh, of course, uh, or but also uh, could be SEE or mm. uh, SLE, Right, without knowing anything, right? I mean, I think it's unlikely that, for instance, that an SLI is going to be a motivation speaker. But... Yeah, it's very unlikely. Um, we did uh, type Tony Robbins recently, um, and that's how Damon, um, that was his um, application piece. And he, he made the argument for SCE, which was quite well done, in my opinion. Um, let's, I can't see much. Maybe we can see a quick interview with Simon Sinek, see what we can pick up from that. How do you spell his surname? Um, S I N E K. S I N E K. Yes. Did you got an interview here? Maybe this. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to quickly share this. Um. um here we go. It's okay. Start with why. How great leaders inspire everyone to take action. I mean, I would think that that screams AIE, doesn't it? Yeah, a bit. Let's see what we can get out of to this. To me, this is a world is flat moment. That the people who've learned to game the system, that this discomfort that we feel, we're, we actually are right. Like, they actually don't understand the game they're in. Business is an infinite game, and when you play with a finite mindset, lots of people suffer, including the companies that they themselves are trying to build. That's the great irony. The great irony is the way you build great companies is with an infinite mindset. The way you build great companies is by prioritizing people before profit. The way you build great companies is will before resources. Both things important, but there has to be this general leaning where we can 
So already talking about people over profit, will over resources, and you have a sort of expressive uh, way of communicating. Look, um, uh, I'll be extremely surprised if this guy is not here. Yeah, I, I'm getting that uh, position quite quickly already, just from his, his big gesticulations, his expressive way of thinking, of, of communicating, and the way he's communicating in these buzzwords as well, a sort of gestalt based communication of, of buzzwords. And even in those, what is he prioritizing? Again, people over profits, will over resources. It's more beta sort of elements over gamma. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, is that, is, is even, I mean, assuming that, that uh, assuming that he's sincere and not just blah, blah, he's even leaving his socionic preferences in, 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 in these things. Yes. Maybe I can it's go basically. a little bit. Let me show a little bit more to see what else we can find. Feel. When we come to work and feel, oh, feel. like we're part of something bigger than ourselves. Ah. When we feel that our work and our effort is worth more than simply Ooh. the money we make. Okay. Yeah. I think we got AIE yeah. right Look, there. <laughs> I mean, and, and, he, and he's, almost, he's almost singing, please, please, I'm a bit, I'm a bit. So. Yes. Feeling the, the it's a feeling I'm part of something more. We got the extroverted ethics and introverted intuition yeah, yeah, coming I mean, up <coughs> very quickly, actually. I mean, mm. he, okay, he could be uh, 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 for the sake of argument, he could be something like an ILE who who, who discovered that playing an EIE is his meal ticket, right? But apart from that, it seems yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible. I mean, the sort of will over resources seems un unlikely. From that but let's see let me take a look at this uh i yeah i i think um yeah just just to play devil's advocate is a possibility of Riley. um let me see what else he's well how does he also begin his career he his career at the new york ad agencies um euro rsgc ogilvy and mather he later launched his own business Cinec partners written five books um leaders eat last was his last book um He's an, also an instructor of strategic communications. So Optimism Press. So again, at, yeah. By the way, yeah. Look, uh, he has yeah. a circle here. Why? How? What? Right? I mean, mm. you know that uh, it goes back to Nietzsche, right? Uh, he mm. said something. If there is a why, there is a how. Mm. Interesting. Which, which of course is nonsense because uh, you may know why, but you may not be able to find out how, right? But that's typical. Mm. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, uh, betas would like to, to tend to think. It's a very simple, very simple way of structuring. Mm. Why in the middle, how, then what? Mm. Yeah. It's like there isn't much, there's much elegant theorizing in this. It's more. No, and there isn't anything original about it either, to be honest with you. No, nothing original about it. It's a bit crude, I'd say, in terms of the structure. And it says in this golden circle, he goes on to speculate about the biological factors behind the structure, such as the limbic system. So he's bringing in lots of different ideas and influences to get them to sort of not very sophisticated uh, theoretical theory. It's not really much. No, no, theory. fair enough. But to be right. honest, the person who asked. Did not ask him to, you know, ask to criticize this guy's work, ask to type him. And I think, yeah, I mean, our first sense from just looking at him is EIE. However, yeah, if you were to look in more deeply, which was what I said earlier, maybe we would reach uh, another conclusion. But uh, EIE seems to be the, it's clearly the, the most uh, obvious uh, yeah. choice. But isn't uh, what I meant, I meant to say about that is that. I don't see very strong introverted logic. I see it's more of a cruder introverted logic, which is why I'd say Ile seems less likely. But also looking into the rationale behind it, it says in the golden circle, people are inspired by a sense of purpose or why, that this should come first when communicating before how and what, those being more mechanical explanations, um, what being how representing people's processes or methods, so extroverted logic there, include, and then finally what, representing results or outcomes. So the sense of purpose is the most important thing there. Sure, and of course, mm. no, no, look, and we know that, these, uh, okay, the, 
the Gama critique of this approach is precisely that this approach tends to completely underestimate the complications precisely of the how. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, just because you know what, not just just because you know why you want to do something or even what you want to accomplish mm. uh, doesn't mean that you know how. And and uh, uh, but of course uh, that's one of the things. Mm. Anyway, but anyway, that's that's the anybody else. I mean, uh, any, anybody else? Okay, uh, let's keep it five minutes. Anybody else that we, or anything else we might discuss quickly? What's the type of Jeffrey Epstein? Ah, interesting. Mm. Um, uh, interesting. By the way, who everybody says didn't kill himself, right? Oh yes, yeah, so everyone's saying he didn't kill himself. It's a joke, right? I have no yeah. idea whether he killed himself, but I know that's a meme. Everybody says all the time he didn't yeah. kill himself. I have no idea. No. Um, I don't know, right? I haven't looked into him as a mm. person, right? So I, I don't know uh, what his type is. Um, from the Lero that uh, uh, that we know, uh, that I know of him, right? Is that first he he has a he likes. He's very good in networking. I mean, uh, in, he likes to be part of a, of an elite of powerful people. Yes, uh, it's amazing because uh, he started, he built his fortune from nothing apparently, mm. and he immediately got into a situation where every many people know him. He has a connection that includes uh, uh, Bill Clinton and and of course the now not very popular Duke of York. Yes, um, and he's very good, of course, apparently. If you, I believe, of his, uh, if if the rumors about him are true, that he likes to create a, a sort of, well, he likes to create an environment where essentially people pers pursue, let's say, hedonism, right? Yes. Uh, so, um, <coughs> in, it's interesting. He started. So, uh, so, uh, out, sorry, go on. He started out in 1974 as a physics and mathematics teacher in 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 Manhattan. And then he moved into um, as a junior assistant uh, to a floor trader in banking. Mm. Where he moved up. It's interesting. He starts off in education and then finance. And then later moves more into media. Yeah, mm. I mean, uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, uh, he, uh, it's it uh, he, his preferences and his what you know of his life does suggest uh, a focus and a, and a, and a focus and a and some strength in extroverted feeling right mm. um so but that's really all i can say for the moment mm. uh, probably also uh, f valuing so <laughs> Again, based on based just on 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 that, I suggest the, the beta quadra. By the way, I mean of course, um, maybe no coincidence that both the two most high-profile people we know, I know at least, that are in his circle, Bill Clinton and and Duke of York, are are betas, right? So, yeah. but that's it. I really, I really can tell. I really cannot say I know a, a lot about him, to be honest. No fair. It just certainly warrants closer um, examination at a later date. Um, yeah. Oh, also Donald Trump knew him. A quote about Jeffrey Epstein. Interesting that the only quotes about him are both from Donald Trump. That's a bit selective, in my opinion. Um, it says, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. A lot of fun to be with. He's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do. And many of them are on the younger side. <laughs> yeah. What is the other quote? The other quote, quote, I was not a fan of Jeffrey Epstein, and you watch people yesterday saying that I threw him out of a club. I didn't want anything to do with him. That was many, many years ago. It shows you one thing, I, that I have good taste. Oh, Sorry, who has said has good taste on a Trump? Sorry. <laughs> so there are only two quotes about Jeffrey Epstein and Wick quote, both from Donald Trump. One in 2002, where he's calling him a terrific guy. Another from 2019, saying, I was not a fan of him. I threw him out of a club years ago. It shows you one thing that I have good taste. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't. So I didn't have good taste uh, several years ago. Um, <laughs> oh, look, look. But I mean, uh, 
you, you no. know that Trump says a lot of Trump says this kind of stuff about a lot of people, right? I mean, yes. it's not surprising. So no, no, it isn't. It's just funny. That's the only two it's funny. It's there funny, about. But uh, it's funny. Uh, uh, it's funny. Uh, um, so people who Trump happens to know very slightly, <laughs> if they are not hostile to him, he will say, "Oh, he's a good guy." He says that yeah, all yeah. the time. So I mean, he also says yeah, Kim Jong Un was a good guy. So it's a, it's a good example of I, oh, I'd say is Trump's very weak introverted ethics. Oh, sure. He doesn't bother to investigate people uh, personally. And he'll big them up if he thinks it suits him. And then if as soon as it doesn't suit him, he'll do the opposite and say, oh, no, I hated no, him all along. Um, no, no. Yeah. I mean, look, okay, yeah, no, sure, it's funny. But, I mean, as regarding, it's not very useful for information on Epstein himself. I'm trying to see what else I can... I gave some quotes from Epstein himself. Um, <laughs> for goodness sake, <laughs> someone's been trolling this. The first quote I can find from him is, I didn't kill myself. That's funny. <laughs> Goodness sake, I can't trust Wicked Quote if that's going to be the first thing. Yeah, really... That's very funny. <laughs> now, here we go. Okay, this one I think is serious. Okay. I invest in people, be it politics or science. It's what I do. If you were a boxer at the downtown gymnasium at 14th Street and Mike Tyson walked in, your face would have the same look as these foreign leaders had when Clinton entered the room. He is the world's greatest politician. I'm not sure who's referring to. Okay. Mike Tyson. Uh, Mike Tyson. Oh, okay. I'm asking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, that makes sense. Um, that's more of an extrovert sensation oriented quote, perhaps. There's another one here is I realize what I am. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. I'm not a helicopter pilot. What I'm really free to do is I feel free to follow my own personality. As we discussed yesterday, I can't be totally wacko in what I do. It affects lots of other people who get angry with what I do. Because then it affects me again. But on my own island or my own ranch, I can think the thoughts that I want to think. I can do the work I want to do, and I'm free to explore as I see fit. Hmm. Um. Okay. Well, I mean, uh... okay. Uh, by the way, I mean, uh, sorry, if people yeah? are still listening. Um, I'm going to. I want to make a general comment now. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the, at, the, at the moment, right, today in the present world, for better or for worse, uh, is uh, the, whether people, most people who are famous and well-connected, uh, there's people that we hear about, hear about everywhere, to, uh, uh, unless, of course, they are, uh, uh, they, uh, royalty or something, but they yeah. just inherited it, no matter what the type is. But the the celebrities that sort of are very famous and everybody talks about them, uh, and they are also very famous because they're famous, right? And charismatic, etc. Into mm -hmm. in today's world, which is very influenced by media, not only about uh, visual media, but by every kind of media. Uh, those kind of celebrities, with very little, few, little few exceptions, I think that they will be, uh, uh, they will be of uh, extroverted, they will be of extroverted feeling types, or if actually it was a fairly strong uh, uh, extroverted feeling, mm. and those who. And, and and those who tend to like fame and to be at the top of the social celebrity. Yeah, uh, food chain. If that is a uh, if that is an expression, uh, that seems to be uh, they most they they very they tend to be betas and EAEs and SLEs, for instance, right? That would be the the most the, the default ones, which is why mm. when you're talking about uh, very often it's said, oh, this to be betas. I, I I I am not in it as a jack. I think we are not picking on the beta quadro VAEs, all right? That makes sense, mm. right? If you uh, these are the that's the uh, uh, those are the types that are more like most likely to thrive into 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 environments where fame and charisma and being and looking celebrities and be and going into the the the, the, head, the headlights and uh, and attracting other people and interesting people. These are the most likely types to thrive in this kind of environment. Impact and uh, so, so that is why. Um, 
if you have this kind of people who create a lot of impact, mm. who are, let's say, disruptive in a way, disruptive in that they, uh, uh, they, 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 they shake things, etc. Mm. Uh, these are more likely to be uh, uh, to be uh, betas, and mm. uh, so that's the specifically EAEs and SLE, which are the two extroverted types. Yes. Uh. So. So, for instance, uh, which is why, uh, unless something very bizarre is going on there, it would be almost extremely unlikely that something like Epstein uh, would be an EII hmm. or an SLI, for instance, or an ILI. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. As often the, the ILIs often come to fame, usually for saying something wrong and getting caught up in some sort of scandal over saying something wrong. Uh, yeah, anything else? Um, someone's asking about Prince Andrew, but I think now take a bit more time to go into. I know you fought SLE. Um, I, when I talked to this, and I suggested SLE for um, for some people, they reacted. They'd seen the interview of him, and he didn't seem very SLE-ish. Although, then again, he was very much on the spot. He was a, a royal in a very unfamiliar situation. But Yeah, look, no, no, look, look, look. I mean, uh, fair enough. Right. Um, you, see, you mean that interview, which was a complete disaster. Mm. Um, I'm not sure about. I, I mean, I, I don't know what was. I, I I don't know what was necessarily known as Lee about that either, because that interview to me simply showed somebody who. Um, somebody who. How can I? How can I? Let me put this clear. He is he. Um, he went there, let's say, with overconfidence, right? Mm -hmm. He basically thought that he could handle something like that interview and do well mm -hmm. against the better device of people because people mm -hmm. around him they did tell him not to do that. Yeah. But he basically says, "Oh, I can handle it. I can do it." <laughs> and obviously, it was a disaster. He caused the precise. Uh, he caused this specifically the, uh, the opposite impression he expected. Um, some of the things he said, although, like the story about going to get a pizza for one of his daughters in walking, um, even if in a, in in, in, in itself maybe, if, but but if it be true, such surely the way he didn't realize that he did come out as being absurd. So to me, it shows somebody who is. Uh, who is not who basically he, he okay let's put this way he thought he could uh, uh pull a trick of marketing or a pull a trick of image sell uh, image mm -hmm. recuperation and he couldn't he basically achieved the yeah. other opposite right so it to me it looks like somebody who who vastly over, overestimated his ability to manipulate the media and his image in his mm -hmm. in, in his favor Basically backfired. Mm. So somebody who who is who knows that they are poor in extroverted uh, feeling, um, I suspect somebody like Prince Charles would not probably as go to such an interview without before listening mm. very carefully to what his PR people say, mm. right? And basically say, okay, uh, let's. I'm going to. To uh, I'm going to to be very well prepared and know exactly what 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 is going on. So I, I would suggest that alone would would imply SLE. Mm. However, also an SLE. I mean, it's, it's consistent with SLE, but to one that through his life uh, was just used to uh, to being surrounded by people who just flatter him, right? Mm. Uh, oh, oh, you are great. You are very good in doing this, etc. Because uh, uh, because and uh, people would, would uh, who basically somebody who didn't realize that whatever charisma he's had or social skills he had were not really due to uh, to his personal skills, but just as to his status as a, as a royal. Yeah. And the moment that that didn't work, the moment that he was in a situation where uh, the press was not inclined to to be intimidated or impressed by his royal status. They just wanted to 
to see, okay, what the hell were you doing there with Epstein? Uh, then he had to rely on, on, on his own skills and his own skill failed. But of course, he didn't know that his skills were so bad because if he did, he wouldn't have gone that, uh, he, would, he wouldn't have gone there so unprepared and dismissing his the advice of his PR people like that. You see what I mean? He just sort of jumped into it without listening to caution. Thinking no, 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 the, yeah, but not, not, not listen, but not realizing that he wasn't yeah. as good at mm. handling interviews or, or, or damaging control of his image as, as, he, thought, as, as he thought he was. Mm. Yeah. He basically yeah. expected, obviously, I mean, what, I mean, unless he's completely insane, he mm. basically expected people to just swallow what he was mm. saying, right? Uh, 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 like, for instance, he, he said something which to me sounds like a medical absurdity. He actually said he didn't sweat. Remember that? I think I saw that, yes. He said he has a medical condition whereby he doesn't sweat. Now, I don't, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I, I'll be really surprised if there is a medical condition that says you don't sweat, right? Yeah. And, and uh, so he said, and, but of course, I think he, he didn't, he's, he's, I think he's used to people just swallowing whatever bullshit he says, not realizing that people did that because of who he was, not because of, but not because his bullshit was convincing. Maybe it's a royal family gene, all the descendants of William the Conqueror. Don't sweat. Ah, well, uh, so, 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 uh, so uh, okay, I'm not saying, I'm not making that an argument for SLE, right? I'm saying mm. that uh, I find it consistent with with SLE, really. Yeah. That that to make that to uh, and and going back to Donald Trump. Well, Donald Trump, mm. he, he Donald Trump, of course, he often makes mistakes with E, because mm -hmm. that's why uh, 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 when he says stuff that some people think are, are a joke, but uh, many people find offensive. Yeah. Uh, but Trump, he became more bold with his E in the mm. last few decades because he became successful as it because he became a, he was a, a celebrity show mm. right uh, and but of course to this day I mean he obviously is still overestimates his skills in it which besides why very often he he says stuff which mm. uh, people uh, which people um, at least many people are offended by when it, it doesn't seem to be his intention mm. because I think it takes a certain extroverted ethics valuing when people are talking about this, people are sort of talking and suggesting you've done this this thing, that you feel the need to go in and correct your reputation and then do it in a way which then stumbles and falls due to overconfidence. No, no, sure. But look, if you are in the public eye, mm. right? If you are a public figure and your reputation is damaged. Yes. You have to do something about it, especially because yeah. if you hadn't done it, it would contaminate the royal family, right? So mm. I think that even if you didn't value extra feeling, right, you'd have to do that. Mm. The question is whether no. you do that understanding that you are not very good at it. And then you take advice because there will be many people ready to, to tell him precisely how to, to handle the press. And he very obviously didn't. He just... Oh no, no! I know best. I know how to do it. I know. I'll, 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 I'll know. I'll, I know how to to manage my own image. I don't need your advice. I just do it myself. And of course, if you if you do it well, that's then you do it well. But obviously, he yeah. didn't. He what did what that interview backfired completely. Yes. Okay. No, so that's... anyway, so I, I know I, I, uh, that is to me is is uh, consistent with SLE, right? So when people say. I didn't. That's, I mean, that's a problem. When people say, "Okay, it didn't seem SLE," I'd like to know exactly. Okay, what exactly is that that it didn't seem SLE? Mm. Um, so that's the problem with uh, this kind of. Uh, anyway. Okay, I think I think we've <coughs> got on for a good amount of time now, Peter. It's been yeah, a, yeah. Um, I went further than I said, but that's fine. It's, 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 not, it's not so bad. Mm. No, I think it's good, and we should have another one soon. I probably with more warning to my other team members of when it's happening. I think <laughs> I need to let Rita know um, in advance as well, because she caught, was caught on the where she, um, I think she would like to attend another one with us. 
Um, yeah, thank you very much for. No, but uh, but it's, it's difficult to get other, everybody from time zones in the same uh, in the same uh, at on time. Yeah, true, it can be. But Peter, thank you very much, and thank you everyone for tuning no in. Pleasure. And we'll do another one soon. Yeah, maybe if people leave in the comments, we can talk suggestions. We can talk about it next time. Yeah, no, I agree. Oh, dear, that was an accident. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, no, sorry. Something appeared on the screen. Didn't want to do that. <laughs> Um, okay, um, I'm gonna, okay, take care everyone, bye-bye.